Today is the 15th anniversary of the Gatuma massacre. And now, in our studio, we have our special guest who's going to tell us about his experience to seek justice and bring the awareness to this rebels attack. My name is Bernard Manguin. Um, I am a Belgian citizen. I came in Great Lakes region at the end of the years 80. And at that period, I uh, was f there for business. But uh, after uh, the war began in October 1990 in uh, Rwanda, and in Rwanda, uh, I was very fast, very quickly uh, connected to some people of RPF. In the meantime, I was uh, engaged for some uh, files in Burundi uh, where I discovered people who became my friends for many, many years. Uh, and so I developed activities in Rwanda from one side, in Burundi from the other side, and even in Kivu Lakes. Uh, I was uh, engaged by family Ngezayo after the uh, murder of Albert in Goma and uh, I'm still working on that and I was uh, engaged uh, by other people when some problems arrived in Kivu. Uh, thank you for telling us about the experience that you have in the region of the Great Lakes. It is saying that you are in charge with the Gatumba case after the attack. Uh, can you tell us anything about it? First element, I was invited two years ago in, by the Foundation to a uh, New York uh, convention and uh, they asked me to explain with my experience how to manage today the Gatumba file, taking in consideration that there are so many years without any judicial evolution. On that base, I made a lot of recommendations. After that, uh, the people didn't come back to me, but I received a new phone call from Esperance saying me mentalities evaluate. We would like to meet you again in the morning so that you sh can uh, explain again your position and eventually say other things about the judicial aspects. And so I came and I have seen that here the mentalities uh, evaluate and that uh, in the mind of the population, in the mind of the participants, the idea to go uh, in the way of collecting evidences and investigate deeply the, that idea is, is going on and I, I hope that at the end you will create a team with a lawyer like Jean-Paul, with perhaps a few other group uh, of people who can investigate and go ahead uh, and, and restart everything. So, uh, going back to the question, so that means you have started working on that case. What would you tell the survivors about the case? Is it pending? Processed? What would you tell them? Oh, yeah. So, the file is opened. It's opened in Bujumbura, uh, where there is even uh, a, a number who is given to the complaint of Mr. David. And secondly, uh, there are uh, letters and complaints sent to ICC and there is something uh, with the authorities in Kinshasa. Now the question is uh, how, how much time it will take. To answer that question, it's very complicated. Why? And I explained it this afternoon. It's because it depends from the judicial power who are in charge of a file. 
I don't trust so much judicial power in Burundi because they had the opportunity since more than 15 years, since the beginning, to investigate, to go ahead. They never uh, have done anything. They say the people who could be charged have an immunity and we don't see anything. So I think it's a question of time, but at the end of the game, if you collect the good evidences and if there is a political, global political evolution in the region, I think you, you can hope to have justice. Okay, I have a question which is kind of hard to understand because we know Agato Guasa is about to be elected. So, if he becomes a president, are you going to keep working on the case? Is the case going to keep going or is it going to stop? Or how is it going to work? You know, first, uh, in my uh, position as lawyer, I always say as long as some people are not declared guilty, in my mind, they remain innocent. But I have to investigate, and if we have some evidences against somebody, we can say, okay, we have those evidence, we want to go in court with those evidences. So the question is, in the case about Agaton, you have one person, his right-hand man, who said at the radio, we are the perpetrators. Uh, is it sufficient, not sufficient? If I am a professional, uh, I should say, I need to collect additional evidences to be sure that I don't do any mistake. This is from a professional side, uh, and not from the political side, because somebody saying publicly, we are the perpetrators, it's a big, big uh, recognition. No, uh, the other side is, for me, the question is the, of the function of somebody doesn't matter. I am a, a, a man of law. If you are at the law level and that you are guilty, you have to go in court. If you have a high level, high position in the community, uh, you have to go in court. Where is the problem? Of course, we know that uh, people who are in charge of, uh, of a state uh, are the beneficiaries of immunities during the period that they are working as uh, president of, of a state. But uh, except that immunity, at the end, the people have to go in court. Uh, uh, when when the, the case was given to the Burundian authority, how was the case received? Was it received as an interesting case or it was just received as a normal case? You know, Gatumba is a tragedy. Tragedy with so many people killed the same horror in a camp of refugees under UN protection. So, first, you cannot say I don't investigate. Second, uh, it's not a classic file of a classic murder. The main question is, who had access to the content of a Burundi's file? Can we have a copy of that file? Can we see what is in, in the file? Because if, if they investigate in a professional way, we will see it very, very quickly. If they hadn't investigated in a professional way, we will see it too. And uh, if you want my uh, little feeling, I fear that no 
deep investigation took place. And never forget, and it's what I said this afternoon, you have to replace a file is in, in the political, global political context. And the po po political context at that period was the apparent conflict between Hutu and Tutsis. But, okay, how does it, the UN say about this? Uh, because, you know, I know as a lawyer, because you have to do investigation and you have to go on either side, how does UN take this, uh, this case? Because people were killed and they were in the hands of uh, UN. How do they take this, this file? I fear, I fear sincerely that uh, for UN it was of course a, a scandal because the security programs failed and I think that they were uh, so much embarrassed. The proof, they found solution with uh, United States to obtain a status of refugee for many Banyamulenge here in the US. But uh, except that, have you idea of what they have made spe specifically for truth, for justice? I have seen nothing in the file till now. Uh, uh, some of the survivors are still in Burundi uh, because they haven't come here yet. Do you think they are safe? as a refugees, they survivors, but they're still in Burundi. But since you are working on that case, and the case, it's in Burundi, do you think they are safe? You know, for the people who are concerned by files in Burundi, I'm always anxious. Not only for the file here, but for the, all the files uh, who have a political uh, complexity because uh, you never know what can happen but my experience is very clear victims are not immediately uh, in danger the first people who are in danger is the people who can be witnesses and in a certain sense the little hands who perpetrated the crimes because all those little, little people who were involved, who came in the camp, who, who spread the, the grenades and killing and so on, all those people, uh, they, they are there. And they are, uh, for tomorrow, our witnesses. Because you and me, we are not uh, seeking the little people who are poor, who have not money, that are uh, under pressure to make some crimes. We are seeking for the people above who decide and who organize the crime. Uh, thank you so much for the questions. Uh, we're going to end our interview here. and. Uh, uh, I would like to thank you for giving us the time. I know it's kind of short. We didn't have enough time to uh, talk more about this case. Thank you, you so much. It's an honor. It's a honor to organize defense of the community because uh, I know the risk of a genocidal process. I know uh, the discrimination who affected the, your community in the past. And uh, I think as far as we can obtain justice, we can construct something other than what happened. By ending our interview, is there anything you would like to tell the survivors in general? Just say them, continue to fight for state of law. You know, uh, to fight for strong state, to fight for state without corruption, with strong values, with independent judicial power, with people who are in a team fighting against corruption, with great judge and great justice, if you find in that direction, the question of Gatumba tragedy will 
be involved in the wool movement and I hope that a certain moment your community will be able to, to remain safe and in peace in South Kivu like many, many decades before. Thank you so much. Imurenge.com Imurenge.com